Welcome back to Nightline. We're so glad you came back with us. If you've just joined us, welcome especially for this last segment. You've missed a lot, but you still we've still got a lot to go. We're back going to be back with more from Reverend Philip Geschwin, who's a short-term missionary for the IPHC. And we're going to have more music from Allison Williams and Ashley Coward. Our prayer partners are still with us too. So you can give them a call. If you want somebody to pray with you, they'll be happy to do that. If you just want to call in a prayer request for us to pray over a little later, then you can do that too. You have comments or whatever you have. Um, you can give them a call. You can just call the number that will be on your screen and they'll be happy to talk with you, pray with you, and take your requests. Um, they're always happy to do that. And we're just glad that you're with us. And we are going to be moving into a song because we've had some singing from Allison and, Al and um, Ashley all the way through. But we're going to move to another song now. And this is one from Allison Williams, Forever.
and he's alive forever. Jesus will never die again. He rose from the dead and he is alive forever and we can be too through him. Well, we are back with Reverend Philip Geschwind. And um, in this segment, like I say, I love these, I love these little things. It's a gift of shoes. Right. So I'd like to share with you a humorous story that happened to me a few years ago. As a short-term missionary for the International Pentecostal Holiness Church, I'm unlike most missionaries. I don't live in a specific foreign country, but I live in the U.S. and I serve in places as I'm needed. So I've been serving in Cuba for probably 10 years. The countries of Cuba and Angola in Southern Africa have a political relationship and there are a large number of Angolan students that go to the universities in Cuba. Because of this, the Angolans have a large embassy staff in Cuba, and one of the high-ranking officials there was a man by the name of Carlos. Carlos was a Christian, and he somehow found our church and became a great friend to the conference of our churches. Because of his influence, the conference was able to send a Cuban family to Angola as missionaries. So we were so thankful that Carlos was a part of our church in Cuba. My wife Frida and I were going to visit uh, in Havana, and we had not been there since Carlos had come. And after our arrival, Carlos met us at a church and invite us, invited us to dinner and presented us each with a special gift. And to my surprise, when I looked in the bag, my gift was a pair of shoes. I was just totally blown away. I thanked him profusely, and then after he left, we began to talk and to laugh. I asked the pastor about the gift. How did Carlos know what size shoe to get me? <laughs> he didn't. The shoes were a size eight and a half, and I wear an 11. They were a beautiful, expensive pair of leather shoes, and I would have loved the, for them to fit my feet, but they didn't. <laughs> Frida and I discussed the gift in utter amazement. Could there have been some cultural significance to the gift? Since we were going to eat with them, Frida, Frida began to tell me I should wear the shoes that night. <sighs> And she kept telling me to force the shoes on my feet. Just put them on long enough for him to see them. There was no way I was going to force those shoes on my feet. I felt like Cinderella's ugly stepsister trying to force her foot into the glass slipper. Carlos hosted us at a fantastic restaurant that night. And the next day he invited me to his office where we needed to conduct some business. I was impressed because the first thing he asked me when I entered in his, into his office was to sit at the table and to pray for him and his family and for his job. And to, at the end of the trip, I had the shoes that he gave me sent to a pastor on the other side of Cuba, somewhere that Carlos would never know I had given his gift to someone else. So there is a Cuban pastor that is walking around in a very expensive pair of shoes today. <laughs> And I still laugh when I think of my wife trying to get me to put those shoes on. <laughs> Recently, I remembered the story of Carlos and the unexpected gift. And it reminded me of another shoe story in the Bible. The story is from the book of Ruth. It's the story of Naomi, Boaz, and Ruth. The story starts with a Jewish family of Naomi, her husband and two sons, moving to Moab in a time of famine. The sons marry Moabite wives, and as time passes, tragedy strikes Naomi as she loses her husband and sons and is left with her daughter-in-laws in no way to support themselves. Mm -hmm. You know the story as Ruth pledges herself to Naomi, her people, and her God. And Naomi and Ruth go back to Israel, destitute and no way to live. But there was a relative Boaz, named Boaz who sees them, helps them, and makes the decision that he will make them part of his own family. 
It was a Jewish law that if a husband died, and a relative could take his place. Also, if the family land was lost, that relative could buy it back so that the family history could continue. He was called a kinsman redeemer. And that is the situation in this story. Boaz has fallen in love with Ruth and he's willing to take her and her mother-in-law into his family and buy back what was lost. But there was another relative that was closer th to him than him. So it was in the book of Ruth so th th that we see how he dealt with the relative that was not willing to redeem Naomi's family and Ruth. Ruth 4, verse 7 through 10 says, Now this was the custom in ancient times in Israel for redeeming and exchanging. To confirm a transaction, a man would remove his sandal and give it to his neighbor. This was a binding contract in Israel. Therefore the Redeemer said to Boaz, Buy it yourself. And he removed his sandal. Then Boaz said to the elders and all the people, You are witnesses today that I have bought everything that belonged to Eliakim, Colonian, and Malon from Naomi. Moreover, I have also acquired Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of Malon, to be my wife in order to preserve the name of the deceased man for his inheritance so that his name will not be cut off from among his brothers or from his, or from his town. You are witnesses this day. So Boaz and Ruth were married and they had a child and Naomi became a grandmother. The family became the ancestors of the great King David and finally Jesus of Nazareth. Now, like the story of Naomi, the story of mankind also starts out as one of tragedy. Following the fall in the garden, there is death, displacement, no way out. But through the passage of time, the descendant of Naomi, Ruth, and Boaz comes into the picture. And Jesus was willing to redeem us all by giving his life for us. A kinsman redeemer. He came, born as a man gave his life on the cross for our sin, one of the human family buying us back, giving us a place in his kingdom. Friend, tragedy may have struck your life. You may be displaced. You may have no means to support yourself, but there is a kinsman redeemer. He has shown up at the city gates of this world and placed his claim to redeem us. He sealed the deal with his very blood and he has taken us to himself. What a future and inheritance we have in him. There's a wedding feast coming soon and he will return to this earth and take us to be with him forever. We can rejoice in the middle of this present situation because we know he has bought us for himself, our kinsman redeemer. I now think that I understand the significance of the gift of shoes that Carlos gave me. I think it was his way of saying we were partners in building the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Carlos has since died, but not before impacting the world for Jesus Christ. May I be wearing the shoes of the gospel of peace in Jesus Christ spreading the good news everywhere that I walk. I'm reminded of a famous phrase in the movie, in the movie Forrest Gump. He's sitting on the, on the bench and he says, if these shoes could talk. My wife used this phrase several years as the opening for a speech she had to make about her life. She used her old basketball shoes to talk about her high school years as an athlete. Then she used her white nursing shoes to talk about her career as a, nurse, as a nurse. I don't remember the rest of her speech after that, but I'm sure she must have had something to say about being a mother and especially something to say about her wonderful husband. <laughs> if your shoes could talk, friend, what would they say? Would they say you had a full life serving God and your fellow man? Would they say you followed the path God set before you? Perhaps they might say you got lost for a period of time, but you made it back 
to where you needed to be. If your shoes could talk, what would they say? What would the story of your life be? Oh, I'm so thankful for the gift that Carlos gave to me. It seemed very strange at the time, but now it makes perfect sense to me. Carlos was telling me, let's both walk in the peace of the gospel of Jesus Christ and do everything that we can to serve our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that is a wonderful message to walk in the peace of Jesus Christ and to draw others in with us. It's a wonderful thing. And you are planning another trip to Cuba soon. Frida and I will be going uh, to Cuba May the 2nd through the 8th. Uh, we have another missionary couple that's going to be going with us. Uh, we're carrying resources in for, uh, for our church there. They have uh, shortages of a lot of different things, and so we'll yeah. take, be taking medicines. We'll be taking uh, personal health care items. Uh, we also, uh, one of the unusual things that I'll be taking in this time is we have one of our pastors that has a prosthetic leg, mm. but he's unable to get the sock that fits onto the leg before yeah. you put the prosthesis on. Okay. So we've been able to find those socks and we're taking them in for that pastor. He's been right. un unable to wear his prosthesis now for a couple of years. Wow. So we're thrilled to be able to go in and be a blessing to our church, to uh, comfort them, to guide them, to give, this, give them any advice that we can. And we have a wonderful church in Cuba. Uh, their uh, time stood still in the 1950s for the most of Cuba, but the church didn't get the message to stop going out <laughs> and spreading the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we're thankful that even in a difficult place, the gospel goes out and our churches are reaching people for Jesus Christ, and we're thankful to be a part of that. That's great. So does your wife go with you on these trips? or She's able to go with me more now since uh, she's retired. Yeah. And uh, so this is a privilege to be back to, to, be back to go in now. Uh, we have sort of a kind of a change that happened back in uh, uh, a few years ago when we had a, a change in the leadership of the United States of America. The... Uh, the, the administration stopped flights into certain parts of Cuba. Mm -hmm. So we've not been able to get into the eastern part of Cuba, but we're planning on this trip to be able to make, make it into eastern Cuba. And uh, that is where the bulk of our work is at and be able to get back to the churches and the friends, the dear friends that we have in that part of the country. Okay, so you are going to specific churches as you go in. Um, We'll be visiting, uh, probably visiting a lot of the different churches. One of the other things we'll be doing, uh, part of the uh, ministry of the International Pentecostal Holiness Church is called People to People. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have a child sponsorship program. So we'll be going, uh, visiting uh, several different places, doing the updates right. for those children, getting new pictures and biographical information. So they continue okay. to be sponsored uh, and we'll take those funds in with us for those sponsorships when we go in, in May. Okay. There is so much work to do. And like Jesus said, the laborers are few. And every person is called. Now, Amen. every person may be called to a different area, to a different thing that they do, have, but they're all called. We are all called. Um, right now, we're going to have a song from Ashley Coward, Sparrow. I 
His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I know he watches you, wherever you are, because he loves you, and he cares for you. Um, we have some requests here. There's no way we're going to be able to read them all by any, by any means. Um, but here's, here's a lady who said she's having chest pain, and her husband has atrial fib and is in the hospital. And here's one with Parkinson's and needs healing. Yeah. There's a lady here also who has pro must be having some problems with her eyes. Uh, and one here who's got some blood circulation problems in their legs. Mm -hmm. And even, even to a point where um, a grandson needs a job. Yeah. So yeah. God knows and he sees every, every request. He, he knows him before we even ask him. He and does. we could, we just want to take these to God in prayer, Father. We ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would touch and work in each heart, each life, Father, and heal bodies, heal and bring requests to fruition, Father God. People needing jobs, people needing healing in their legs, their backs, their, their hearts, Whatever, it doesn't matter to you, God. You have the healing capabilities for every person, Lord, no matter what it is. All you have to do is speak the word and the healing is accomplished. Father, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor for all you're doing, Lord. But Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God hears our prayers. Amen. God cares about you. You may Hallelujah. be watching and you think, God doesn't really care about me because I've been too bad. <laughs> Jesus died because we had all been too bad. But you know what? He loves us. He cares for us. Amen. He loves you tonight. And he wants you to come to him because he knows if you do, 
He can change your life. He can give you life as you have never known it before. And you don't have to be in a church. You don't have to be at a certain place at a certain time. All you have to do is just ask him to wash you, to cleanse you of your sins, for him to forgive you and ask him to help you to walk with him because you want to surrender your life completely to him. That's what he asks. And you know, when we surrender our lives to him, it's the most wonderful day of your life. Hallelujah. And it begins the most wonderful type of a life that you could ever know. Jesus loves you. And I'm asking you, please, to give your life to him. Let him show you what life really is. It's not partying in this world. It's not doing all those things that this world offers. It's knowing Jesus Christ That's right. and following him with your whole That's heart. Right. And it's mm -hmm. not hard at all to do. Just repent and receive his forgiveness yes. and begin to walk in the new life that you receive. I will never forget that new life and how I felt such newness of life when he came into my heart and into my life. And he'll do it for you. He doesn't just do it for me or for those of us sitting here. He wants everybody to be saved. He wants everybody to come and know him and love him. And he's made the provision for it. So accept him tonight and start a brand new life like no other you've ever seen. We want to thank our guests and say thank you, too, for joining us tonight for Nightline. We've enjoyed it and hope that you have been blessed tonight. May God bless you and keep you.